So next we are going to look at the logical operators and almost all of them we have seen in C programming but what hardware is inferred by these operators when we are using Velo uh, we will examine it. So first let me check the equality operator. So suppose uh, I want to check whether two inputs are same or two signals are same. Okay, let me just call it as logical. Uh, I have one input again let's take 8 bits this time 8 down to 0 in 1 and input 7 down to 0 in 2 and a single bit output out you can simply check assign out equal to in 1 double equals in 2 so this double equal to that is our equality operator. He just checks whether these two values are same or not. If they are same, again in C we say like it is returning a Boolean value, uh, true. In our hardware implementation, it will return a value of one, high state. So if they are same, out will be one. If they are not same, out will be zero. Okay, so let's check it. So in one, let me make it one zero one zero one 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 one. Same for in two also. One zero one zero one 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 one. And when we run it, you'll see like out is one because they are same. If I change one bit here. So you can see the data has changed and our out it becomes zero because now they are not same okay so that is what our equality operator same way we have greater than smaller than greater than or equal to smaller than or equal to operators so we can simply write in one greater than in two let me recompile So let me for in one as 100 decimal. So tick the 100. Since it is 8 bit, uh, we can go up to 255. And, five. and into as tick the 50. And when you run it, see out is 1 because in 1 is greater than in 2. Right? So if I make into as uh, tick the 200. you will see it will become low because in one is smaller than in two okay so same way we have greater than greater than or equal to uh, less than less than or equal to you can try all of them now if you are expecting in one and in two to be uh, negative numbers also uh, of course you will have to add a dollar sign here otherwise he will treat them always as unsigned numbers and will be always treated as positive numbers now I would like to briefly show you what kind of hardware will be actually implemented uh, when you use these operations. Okay, For example, uh, when you are checking whether A is B, we are checking for equality and in hardware this can be easily implemented using an XOR gate. Okay, So as you know, uh, the feature of XOR gate is if its inputs are same, either both of them are 1 or both of them are 0, the output will be zero so we can take use of it exploit this to implement this uh, equality check this comparison okay so basically all all these are comparison operations whether this one this one this one this one they are all comparison okay so the piece of hardware which will be implementing this uh, we can call them as comparator so comparator um, again, treating it as a black box. I want to compare two numbers A and B here. Okay, and I have a single output coming here. Okay, let's call O. So what is actually happening inside computer? So if you are using this operation, equality checking, uh, we can easily build the computer using only XOR gates. Okay, so again, assume uh, this is 8 bits wide. That means for them to be equal, 
each and every bit should be the same so you have to do bit by bit comparison so we will need eight xor gates to do it okay so let me take eight xor gate i'm just drawing three of them so here i will compare the first two bits so i'll compare a of zero with uh, b of zero if they are same the output of xor will be zero if they are not same output of xor will be one okay so if this is the seventh bit this is a uh, a of seven uh, b of seven this is a of six b of six so i can say both numbers are same only if the output of all these xor gates are zero okay so what i should do i i need some logic whose output will become high only when all inputs are low so which logic is that that is our nor operation so i will take a nor gate and i will connect the output from all these xor gates here all eight of them so this has eight inputs and one output so only if all of them are low the output of nor gate will become high so my o will become high only when both numbers are exactly same so that's how we can implement this operation now the greater than or equal to less than or equal to again uh, there are different ways of implementation uh, one straightforward way for example you want to check whether a greater than b okay so what you can do uh, one logic is you can subtract b from a you can do a minus b and if this produces a carry or borrow whatever you call it okay let me call it a borrow bit or a carry bit that means a is smaller than b if there is no borrow bit okay no borrow that can happen due to two cases either a is greater than b or a is b in that case also so it is easy to implement greater than or equal to okay so let me take the simplest one greater than or equal to so this can happen in this case also so what i can do is my comparator inside my comparator it is a chain of subtractors okay. subtractors how to make subtractors subtractors are same as adders what you do is for the second operand you will take the twos complement and just provide it to the add so addition with twos complement is same as subtraction right so we will have our a and b here and this circuit will do the subtraction and when you subtract uh, as you know if they are eight bits you can have nine bit output but in the actual result we are not interested what we are interested is on the ninth bit that extra bit that final carry that is what we are interested in if that is one that means a is smaller if that is zero that means a is greater than or equal to so what we need we need a circuit called a mux a multiplexer actual design we'll be seeing soon multiplexer what multiplexer does is okay it will have many inputs but one output okay. for example here i have a mux i'm giving two input a and b one output o and it has one more signal here a control signal or we call it a select line and i will say like if this sc0 if sc0 my o will be same as a else o will be b so this guy he can choose one of these inputs as the output so such circuits we are going to call it as a multiplexer so here what i need if there is a carry bit that means the condition a greater than b is false okay so i will permanently ground this input of this max like this input i have permanently grounded so if this is one this zero will come out as o this is o this is zero and the other input i will permanently connect it to vcc so that if this is zero that means the output is vcc high which is basically indicating a is greater than that's how we can implement our comparator if you want to check a greater than b or b less than or equal to a 
it's exactly the same circuit because these two are complementary, right? Now, if you want to check B greater than A, it is the same circuit, but uh, you will just interchange these inputs. Instead of subtracting uh, B from A, you will subtract A from B and you will get the similar result. So this we can use either for B greater than A or A less than or equal to B. It will satisfy that also. Now if you want to check whether A greater than or equal to B, we will have to combine this circuit with the equality checking circuit that we have seen before. Yeah. So that you can try again as a practice how that circuit will look like. So I have this uh, subtractor mux based logic and I have that previous XO based chain. Now by combining these two things, you should be able to implement this greater than or equal to logic. Okay, so that you can give a try. Now the next logical operation is this uh, conditional operator. Okay, so again, let me write a condition. This will look exactly like the mark logic that we can. So uh, I have two input again in one and in two. Let me write a condition. If in one is greater than in two, I want my out to be one zero. Let's say else. I want my out to be zero. Okay, so in this case, I'm saying my out is two bits. So we'll have to make it two bits. Now, in greater than in two. Okay, so if I simply write in one greater than in two, uh, if you simply write like this, you know what is going to happen. Out will get the value one. If I make it two bits, out will get the value 0, 1 in this case because 0, 1 is representing 1 using 2 bits. So this condition I cannot implement by this simple statement. We need to do something additional. That is where our conditional operator is coming. Again in C we have this question mark followed by this corner. So this is the syntax. You will say assign output equal to. You will write some condition. Okay. So in 1 greater than in 2. That is my condition. Then you will put this question mark. After that, you will write what should happen if this condition is true. So if this condition is true, out should get 1, 0. Okay. So how are we going to write 1, 0? If you simply write 1, 0 in with log, it will be treated as number 10, not as binary 1, 0. Okay. So remember our old thing. Uh, you can again write it in different ways. One way is you can say 2 bit P 1, 0. That means it's a 2 bit signal and a binary value is 1, 0, or you can write 2 tick D2, because in decimal 1, 0 is 2, a better way is 2 tick D2. It's the case if it is true, if it is false, okay, you will put a colon, we will have to write 0, 1, okay, condition, true output, false output, okay, you okay, 2, you can write 2 tick D0, 1. But in this case, even if you write 0, 1, it will work because in decimal also it is 1. But by default, it will be treated as a 32 bit number uh, and you will get a warning to avoid. We will always put 2 tick. Okay, so let's try this one now. Uh, recompile. So let's force in one as. D40, let's say, and into as put a smaller number, or larger number, 60. So you'll see the output is 0, 1, and this one, because this condition is false. But if I make it D100, D100. The output is 1, 0 because this condition is true, right? Okay. So in model sim, uh, this is how signal changes will be shown if it is composed of more than one bit. You can see it looks like a bus. As we said before, you can expand and see uh, individual signals also from the bus. So that is our uh, conditional operator. Now you can chain these conditional operators also. For example, if in one greater than in two out is one zero, okay, 
let me say like in one equal to equal to into out is zero zero and if in one less than into out is zero okay now i have three different cases so previously we had only two cases so in this case you will have to chain this conditional operation okay so how are we are going to do it so out equal to okay we'll write the first condition in one greater than in two out is one zero fine after that we put colon that means here we are going to write if this condition is not satisfied okay so if that condition is not satisfied what we should do we need to check the other conditions also so i can write in one equal to equal to two again question mark that means if this condition is true what should happen output is tick to b zero zero if that is also false it will tick b zero one this condition okay so like that you can keep on chaining it as much as you want this condition of it so quite useful and you can test it i'm not running it you should uh, try yourself and let's see whether it's working okay so as i mentioned before one of the most common use of this conditional operator is in the implementation of so-called multiplexer uh, if you haven't seen it in theory let me quickly show you what a multiplexer is okay so multiplexer um, mux we usually call it's a circuit which is used for selecting one of the inputs as the output from it so it has many inputs and a single output okay generally in the simplest form it will have two inputs and one output let's call it in one this is into this we call as the select this is our out so using our condition statement how i can write so i can say assign O equal to if select is zero my output will be same as in one otherwise my output will be two. okay so this is how it looks like now to actually design the circuit of course we need the truth table you know so here we can write the inputs and outputs so if i have in one here in two here s here Okay, so actually there are three inputs and only one output okay now in truth table how we will write so if select is zero out is same as in one okay so if select is zero if in one is one my output will, will be also one what is the condition for into into it doesn't matter no matter what is the value of into if in one is one s is zero o is one so we can put an x there indicating it's a don't care we don't care about into so it can have value either one or zero it doesn't matter o will be one so if i have zero here and if s is also zero again i'll put the same as in one so zero here don't care here if s is 1 he will always choose into as the output so if into is 1 output is also 1 in 1 doesn't matter this is 1 this is 0 doesn't matter what is in 1 of this 0 so this is how the truth table looks like so usually if you have uh, three inputs you will have eight to two out of three eight entries in the truth table but because we are using this don't care condition we have only four entries in our truth table then uh, you can optimize it using our care map. So again, let me quickly try to solve it. So we'll have not in one, not in two, not in one, in two, in one, in two, in one, in two, not. Here we have not as, and as we choose the cases 
error of this one so one is here so this is not s and in one so we have not s here and we have in one here in one here similarly this one is s and into we have s here we have into high here we have into high here also in other cases the output is zero and you can group it like that and you can write our whole as so practically it's not much optimization you know, just by looking at the truth table you can write it so here what is this in one not s or here is into s That is the expression okay after optimization even from here you can write like in one not s or into s so this is what our multiplexer is so what is the inside so we have an or gate of course we have an and gate here and it is getting in one here we have this select line coming we will invert it give it to this guy to another AND gate we directly give this select line and into here and we connect them together and we have O. So this is the actual multiplexer and we abstract it as this symbol like this. So we have in what to S and O. Okay so this is the abstract model this is the symbol for this multiplexer. Now this is a simple multiplexer uh, which has two input and one output. So this we will call as two to one max two to one multiplexer because two input, one output multiplexer. You can have uh, more complex ones also. You can have four input, one output. Okay. Now how many control lines should be there if I have four inputs? We need two control lines so if it is zero zero this will go out zero one this will go out one zero this will go out one one this will go out so generally a uh, number of select lines that is the guy here is log to the base two of number of inputs that's the equation so log of how many inputs are there those many select slide we need here to control okay so that's the brief intro to multiplexers so we will go to the last set of operators they are the shift operator again you have seen them so if i have one 8 bit input and another 8 bit output another 8 bit output let's call it into you can the shift operators okay if I say, let me call this as my out, out. I can just say out equal to in one, it's double greater than symbol one. Okay, so this is the right shift operator, and this is our left shift operator. So this basically means. Uh, right shift in by one bit. Okay. So let's try it. Log and start. Okay, suppose my input is force given binary. Now uh, one zero one zero one zero one zero and when I run it my output is C it is same as this right shifted by one position so here this zero is gone because we right shifted one zero one zero one zero and look at the ms bit that became zero okay so when you right shift you are moving the entire thing right by one position so what will happen to leftmost bit it will become zero so if you are right shifting by two position the leftmost two bits they will become Okay, so same thing. If I force it 
to let's make all of them as one. One, 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 one. You can see both MS bits became so. Okay, so that's the right shift. Same way, left shift, you can shift by any value. And when you're left shifting, the LS bits will be replaced by suit. Now, the actual hardware implementation de details. So uh, when you are doing this uh, shift operation, actually it doesn't consume any hardware. Okay. So in our case itself, so we have in as 8 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is my in and I set like my out is Set like my out is in okay right shifted by two positions. So what he will do, he will just connect the inputs and output like this. So this wire will get connected here, this wire 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 here, and these two wires they won't get connected, so they are lost. And we need to replace the MS bits by zero, so these two wires will be permanently ground. So as you can see, like this doesn't consume any hardware. The, there are no logic gates used here. It's just in how you connect it. Same for left shift also. Now, uh, where we are actually using shifting, uh, one advantage is when you're doing multiplication or division by power of two, this is very useful. Okay, so even if you say like out equal to in times four, you're multiplying by 4. This doesn't require an actual multiplier. So in the previous video, we have seen the structure of a multiplier, which is actually complicated. But for doing this operation, you don't need any multiplier because this is same as out is in left shifted by 2 bits. Right? So multiplying by 2 to the power of n is same as left shifting by n position. Similarly, division by uh, 2 to the power of n is right shifting by n bits okay so shifting by two's power uh, does not consume any hardware resource and using that you can easily implement multiplication and division provided a multiplier or dividend they are power of two okay, that's where again you don't have to explicitly replace this with this the implementation tools they are usually smart enough that they will automatically replace your multiplication operation with a shift operation you don't have to explicitly do it but internally this is what is happening so that completes our discussion on operators as well as our discussion on data flow modeling next we'll start discussing about behavioral modeling which is the core of HDL. thank you